What if I told you that everything you thought about infinite versions of yourself is wrong? The many worlds interpretation doesn't mean there are countless versions of you out there. In fact, those people you imagine as alternate versions of yourself, they aren't your version at all. They're completely different and unrelated individuals. I will explain how in a minute, but first we have to understand the difference between classical and quantum mechanics. You see, classical mechanics is pretty great. If you know the exact state of a system, say, the position and velocity of a particle, you can use Newton's second law to predict exactly what it will do in the future. But in quantum mechanics, that's a completely different story. If you know a particle's quantum state, you can use the Schrodinger equation to determine its future behavior. But instead of following a precise path, the wave function usually spreads out over time. But here's the problem. We never actually observe the wave function itself. Instead, when we measure it, we always find the particle at a single point in space. So how does a spread out wave function, evolving smoothly under the Schrodinger equation, suddenly give us a single, point-like particle when we observe it? Well, I think it's understandable. When the founders of quantum theory tackled this problem, they considered the measurement to be more real than the wave function. After all, measurements are what we actually observe, and they align with our experience of a world made up of matter particles. But with the wave function, it was harder to define. Schrodinger developed his wave equation based on the idea that matter has wave-like properties. But that tiny detail ended up introducing probability into the very foundation of our understanding of reality. The universe was no longer deterministic. This deeply unsettled many scientists, including Einstein, who famously resisted the idea. So the way quantum mechanics came to be understood is that there are two sets of rules. When you're not looking, the wave function evolves smoothly according to the Schrodinger equation. But when you are looking, when you make a measurement, the wave function suddenly and irreversibly collapses. Schrodinger himself hated this interpretation. In fact, he wanted to prove that quantum mechanics was wrong. That's exactly why he came up with his now famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. Here is how it goes. Imagine putting a cat in a box with a single radioactive atom. Add a radiation detector that, if triggered, releases a vial of poisonous cyanide gas. If the atom decays, the detector picks up the radiation, releases the poison, and the cat dies. If the atom doesn't decay, the detector stays silent, no poison is released, and the cat remains alive. And this is where things get weird. According to quantum mechanics, the atom isn't simply in one state or the other. It exists in a superposition of both decayed and not decayed at the same time. So, according to quantum mechanics, the cat isn't just either dead or alive. It's in a superposition of both at the same time. Only when we open the box and observe the system does the wave function collapse, forcing reality to pick one outcome. But what if I told you there's actually a better way to think about Schrodinger's cat, and, in fact, a better way to think about quantum mechanics entirely? To get there, we need to examine the three key components of Schrodinger's cat, superposition, entanglement, and measurement. If quantum mechanics feels strange, maybe one of these ideas is flawed. First up, superposition, the idea that quantum objects can exist in two states at once. It's not something we see in everyday life, but we do observe its effects, most famously in the double slit experiment. Fire individual electrons through two slits, and the pattern on the screen isn't just the sum of electrons going through one slit or the other. Instead, we see an interference pattern. The only explanation is that a single electron must be going through both slits at the same time. Now, superposition makes sense when we think about waves. They spread out, and their peaks and troughs can interfere with each other. When unobserved, electrons are described by a wave function. This wave must allow them to pass through both slits simultaneously. Superposition seems to be on solid ground. The next key concept is entanglement. Imagine two electrons fired toward each other with equal and opposite velocities. We know they'll scatter, but we don't know exactly how. Their paths are described by spread out wave functions, giving us only probabilities. But here's where things get interesting. The moment we measure the momentum of one electron, we instantly know the momentum of the other. It must be equal and opposite. But think about what that means. Before we measured it, each electron's momentum was in a superposition of possible states. Measuring one didn't just reveal information. It collapsed the wave function of the other instantaneously, even if they were light years apart. 
the electrons don't have separate wave functions anymore. They're described by a single wave function. That's what it means to be entangled. One measurement affects the entire system. When you really think about it, measurement is just another interaction between quantum systems. Electrons interacting with photons. Photons interacting with detectors. So, what does Schrodinger's cat really look like when we take quantum mechanics seriously? The radioactive atom starts completely undecayed. Over time, it evolves into a quantum superposition of both decayed and not decayed. This state then entangles with the detector. But here's the thing. The detector isn't sitting in isolation. It's constantly bombarded by air molecules, and those things behave differently depending on whether or not the detector registered radiation. So almost immediately, the detector entangles with the environment. It decoheres. But remember, we are also made of atoms and electrons, meaning we, too, are quantum mechanical. So when we open the box, there is no measurement, no wave function collapse. Instead, we simply become entangled with the state of the box. In other words, we see the cat alive, and we see the cat dead. Wait, what? So how does that work? The answer is that the you that saw the cat alive and the you that saw it dead now inhabit separate worlds, two entirely real but entirely distinct realities, one entangled with each possible outcome. You and your copy remain identical, right up until the moment you open the box. But in this picture, the cat is actually either alive or dead. Opening the box doesn't decide its fate, you're just finding out which version of reality you now inhabit. What we don't notice is that the other outcome also happened, just to someone who isn't you anymore. Think about it, both observers came from the same you, but once they split, they are no longer the same person. They can never interact. There is another much simpler way to understand infinite yous, which I will come to in a bit. But for now, this is the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. And if it's correct, that means the wave function is branching constantly, so much so that the rate might be infinite. Universes are created all the time, subtly different, yet completely real. But here's the crazy part. All those worlds are already part of the math of quantum mechanics. The many worlds interpretation just takes them seriously. In fact, removing those extra worlds requires something extra, like wave function collapse. And the point is, our experience of reality would be exactly the same under many worlds, as it would be if the wave function collapsed. But many worlds is cleaner. The universe branches whenever a quantum system in superposition becomes entangled with its environment. And that's happening constantly. Right now, inside your body, 5,000 radioactive decays happen every second. Each time, the universe branches. Now, is this branching happening infinitely often? Maybe. We don't know if the total number of possible branches is infinite or just really, really big. The answer depends on things we don't fully understand. But either way, it's humongous. But what about you being successful in life? Well, that could happen. There is a world where a version of you who made all the right choices is successful. But to be clear, that version isn't actually you anymore. When the universe branches, those versions of you become separate individuals. The you watching this video will never experience what those other versions are experiencing. But somewhere in another branch, another version of you is probably watching a video just like this and wondering if there are versions of him that are either more successful or struggling even more. But let's forget about quantum mechanics for a second. Just think about the universe. It is entirely possible that there is another version of you in this same universe doing the exact same things that you are, but just slightly different. Not only that, but there might actually be an infinite number of you. You see, we don't actually see the whole universe, and that's because light has a speed limit. That means there's a horizon, a boundary beyond which light hasn't had time to reach us. It's totally plausible that the universe is infinitely big. And if that's the case, statistically speaking, there are infinite locations out there where stars have bundled up in the same way they have in our galaxy. And among those countless galaxies, an infinite number contain solar systems that mirror ours. And within those endless solar systems, an infinite number of Earths have evolved with histories identical to ours. That means, somewhere out there, an infinite number of people who look exactly like you 
think like you, and have lived lives just like yours, are watching a video exactly like this one. And who knows, maybe some of them even decided to subscribe. But here's the key, those people aren't you. They aren't versions of you. They are completely different individuals. It just so happens that the atoms in their body are arranged in the same way as they are in yours. Now, since there are an infinite number of these individuals, some of them became billionaires, some won Pepsi awards, some are homeless, some are watching this video upside down for some reason. And here's the crazy part. This has nothing to do with quantum mechanics. So does that alienate you? Let me know in the comments down below. There could be infinite realities existing on separate planes, unable to interact with each other. Or there are infinite places in this universe, just so far away from each other that they cannot interact. Essentially, making them separate universes existing in their own bubbles. So, whether you're watching this video in this branch of reality or another, hit the bell icon, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.